In the early morning hours of June 5, 1995, Layden Gibson, a New York City subway motorman, took control of a westbound J train formed of eight R40 subway cars. It was the second to last run of his shift. He had started his shift at 11.38 p.m. on Sunday, June 4th, and had exhibited barely any signs of intoxication, drowsiness, or anything else that would interfere with his operating quality. That was until the aforementioned second to final run of his shift when he reportedly fell asleep as his train crossed the Williamsburg Bridge. In this video, I tell you the story of the Williamsburg wreck. Consider liking, subscribing, and becoming a channel member if you enjoy this video. At about 6.12 a.m., a Manhattan-bound Emma train was crossing the Williamsburg Bridge when the operator of the train encountered a red signal due to an unscheduled work train directly in front of it. The operator stopped the train at the signal. Six minutes later, Gibson's J train was running at about 20 miles per hour on the same track, traveling in the same direction. The train ran through several yellow and red signals before ramming the back of the M train or at least that's what the MTA claims. The J train's motorman, Layden Gibson, who was 46 years old and an operator for 14 years, was killed. According to the MTA, Gibson was a pre-average operator. He had three minor operating violations and a two-day suspension for stopping a train short of the stop marker. This was the system's second rear-end collision in just four months. The front wall of the J-Train was smashed inward about 8 to 10 feet, crushing Mr. Gibson. One EMS worker who reported to the collision said it was like he was suspended in air in almost a standing position. The walls had collapsed on the sides and there was no floor below him. He was stuck in the metalwork. It took upwards of 20 minutes for rescue workers to get the motorman out of the wreckage, and when they did, they pronounced him dead at the scene and said that he almost certainly died instantly. Drug and alcohol tests on Gibson's blood after the incident were reportedly negative and investigators could not figure out why he could not see the stop train ahead of him. They eventually pinned the blame on Mr. Gibson falling asleep while operating the train. 54 passengers in total were injured, including one who was critically injured. One passenger who was riding in the last car of the Emma train at the time of the accident said that he went flying across the floor and was left with scratches and bruises on his arms and legs. Another passenger, traveling in the first car of the J train, said that the train appeared to have a close call with the Emma train near the Myrtle Avenue station in Queens, when the train was forced to stop abruptly because it was too close to the train in front of it. The force of the crash actually lifted the aforementioned last car of the Emma train two feet off its carriage. One passenger described the collision as total chaos and that it sounded like an explosion. While investigators pinned the blame on Mr. Gibson being asleep at the time of the incident, along with the signals on the Williamsburg Bridge, which, might I add, were over three quarters of a century old, what if I told you that might have not been the real story? There is some speculation that Mr. Gibson didn't actually fall asleep on the job. For this, we must go back to the 1980s. The decade had seen a culmination of technical improvements to the systems on board the various train fleets around the system. This included the train set of R40 subway cars Mr. Gibson was operating. These quote-unquote improvements involved changes to the braking systems. Long story short, the in-shot valves, which main purpose was to eliminate the time spent for the mechanical linkages of the brakes to apply, were removed. Now, the consequences of this meant that some trains, particularly the R62 and R68A subway cars, have delayed brakes, making it more difficult to stop at the correct points. Now, you may be sitting there asking, well, wasn't Gibson operating an R40? And yes, he was, and while the effect to normal service braking was negligible, emergency braking was severely affected. 
Without an in-shot valve, during service braking, and an emergency application, we introduce about 1.6 seconds of freewheeling axle time while air fills the brake cylinders. Those 1.6 seconds may not seem like much, but at 55 miles per hour, the top speed of New York City subway cars, that's over 80 feet added to the stop of the train you've modified. That's more than the length of an R46 subway car, and clearly enough distance to have killed Mr. Gibson, even at the reduced 20 miles an hour he was traveling at. Even if the signals had failed, Mr. Gibson could have been wide awake at the time of the accident and had been unable to stop his train due to the delay in braking. Who knows, the transit authority may not have been telling the full story. Remember, around this time, the system was just coming back from decades of fires, graffiti, and derailments. The last thing they needed was the newspapers telling everyone that the trains had faulty brakes. This collision, along with the Union Square wreck of 1991, contributed to the installation of timer signals across the system. These signals regulate a train's speed, and if one happens to be traveling over the speed limit, the signal will stay red, and should the train pass the red signal, its brakes will be tripped, forcing the train to stop. Recently, however, the MTA has started to raise the speed limits in the system and remove some of the timer signals as a part of Andy Byford's Save Safe Seconds initiative. I hope you enjoyed this redacted tale from the subway. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for more. Also, if you would like to directly contribute to the channel, consider becoming a channel member. What do you think about this incident? Do you think the operator actually fell asleep or that it was an issue with the train? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll see all of you again soon with another tale from the subway. Happy rail fanning everyone.